in Scott Lake, Kansas here at our grouse camp. We're on a lesser prairie chicken translocation project where we're trying to trap lesser prairie chickens so that we can bring them down to southeastern Colorado onto the Comanche National Grasslands and southwestern Kansas onto the Cimarron National Grasslands where we're trying to recover the population of those species. Just three years ago, we were looking at probably less than 50 lesser prairie chickens in the state of Colorado. So the situation for the lesser prairie chicken in our state has, has become rather dire and hence this project. We've been trapping prairie chickens now for three years. We started in the fall of 2016. We're trapping prairie chickens on lex. Lex are the breeding grounds for lesser prairie chickens. Several grouse species have lecking behavior where they all get together on breeding grounds. The males display. The lek is really a, a, a fun thing to watch, all that lecking behavior. The birds are fighting. They're, they're booming and chasing each other around. Lesser prairie chickens make some really crazy sounds. If you ever have the opportunity to, to watch lesser prairie chickens, I really highly recommend it. Uh, I'm kind of biased here, but I think that they're the, the most interesting of the, of the grouse species and, and, and most enjoyable to watch on the lek. So every morning we're trapping these leks. We, we use two different techniques to try to trap these lesser prairie chickens. We have walk-in funnel traps that are three foot long by two foot tall wire traps. But they, we don't bait them, they just have a, a wire funnel at, that goes into the trap, just kind of like a, a minnow trap or a you know, fish trap. Another way that we trap lesser prairie chickens is we use drop nets. Uh, it looks kind of like a circus tent out there on the prairie when we're trapping. And uh, the, you set that right over the, the main part of the lek where the dominant males are, hoping to catch the females as they're coming in. Most of the folks that are trapping are in blinds, and so they'll jump out of the blind and you race to the net as fast as you can. You work that bird out and you put it in a pillowcase. And, and then once we catch those birds and we have them in hand, we load them up in our trucks and put the air conditioning on. We want to keep those birds cool. It seems to reduce their stress. We head to the cabin at Scott Lake and we take a series of measurements on them. We weigh them. We measure some measurements on their heads and their legs, on their wings. Basically, we're looking at some morphometric data. We also, uh, on quite a few birds that we've, we've taken, we've drawn blood, we've taken mouth swab samples because we want to do some disease testing. because We want to make sure that the birds that we're moving into Colorado and down to, to Elkhart area in Kansas that they're healthy and that we're not transporting any diseases into another grouse population or affecting any other wildlife. So while processing the birds, we put a transmitter on every single bird. We want to be able to track their movements and see where they go. Especially for the hens, we want to be able to determine if they're successful at nesting and see where they nest. That's going to help us because we'll be able to, to learn more about the habitat that they're selecting for nesting so we can make sure that we can put more habitat and work to, to get more habitat like that on the ground. Colorado Parks and Wildlife is committed to try to recover and restore endangered and threatened species in the state. So we're doing this project to try to recover one of Colorado's most, I think, iconic grouse species. You know, it's a, it's a species that is, is very much native to Southeast Colorado. It's a part of Southeast Colorado's history and a favorite animal for a lot of people. 